program in the world. So I took um, a class called 100, which is Java programming. And one of the reasons I also took the class was that they give you a free laptop to use. And I was like, extra laptop? Great. But um, I sort of enjoyed it. And also, one of my friends got a job working in John Midas' lab as an undergraduate research assistant. And it seemed like she was doing really fun stuff. So I decided that I would like to do that too. And um, I sort of had a problem in that I couldn't draw, and I couldn't sculpt, and I couldn't basically do anything. Um, and also, the teachers were really into people using hand techniques for producing drawings. So we learned how to draw perspective drawings. We learned how to make models and things like that. But they're really against people using the computer for some reason. I did it anyways, which didn't make me very popular with my teachers. Um, so sort of from there, from just me trying to like enact ideas in architecture that I wanted to do and not being very talented with drawing or sculpting, I ended up going into using coding for that. Um, but did there, uh, I was really interested in the work that John was doing and the work that his students were doing as well, John Maida. Um, just creating this new language of computational aesthetics and experimenting with ways of engaging people with art that was more technical and creating this way for people who are non-technical to code as well. So that was pretty interesting. Uh, but I was also just really interested in a lot of the biology research that was going on. There's some pretty interesting groups that are studying like how different basic types of things have emerged or may have emerged, like RNAs or even smaller things than RNAs that are related. But yeah, I worked in like a few biology labs and stuff when I was a student before I started going into architecture, and that was pretty interesting for me. I worked in one lab, Alexander Rich's lab. He actually is the guy that discovered tRNAs and ZDNA, which is DNA that curls the other direction. We studied these enzymes that change adenosine to inosine. And because of this change, you end up producing a different protein in different situations, which causes a lot of weird things to happen. I worked in another lab that studies the phylogeny of viruses um, that infect cyanobacteria. So cyanobacteria live in the ocean and they photosynthesize and they produce like, they're at the lowest level of things that produce uh, all of the bioproductivity of the ocean. And we study these viruses and we're trying to like study the phylogeny of them. That's probably like going way off, but that's, that's what I was like involved in the first two years I was at MIT before I got into creative coding. I sort of got really sick of working in labs and like making solutions and checking on Petri dishes. And it's really interesting, but not exciting well, to so do. How do you Seeing this algorithm that we're creating, what do we want to do with it? How could we turn it into something that could be a real object or be an application or in some way? Um, once we have some sort of idea, like what direction are we going? Is it going to be something that's 3D printed? Is it going to be, I'm talking about very concrete things like, is it a ring? Is it a lamp? Is it a table? Is it something 3D printed? Is it something that could be carved in wood? Is it something that's solid or porous or open? Um, once we start to get an idea about that, we then have to go back and start you know, changing the system such that it works towards something that seems like it could make sense. Um, our work, I am interested in large-scale 3D printers that can be used to construct buildings and environments. I'm interested in 3D printers that can embed electronics uh, or other components as you're printing. I'm interested in 3D printers that have multiple materials. Basically, I'm interested in things that we can use to materialize our ideas better at different scales and materials that allow them to be used for different functions and purposes, which they can't currently be used. Um. Also growing buildings, that would be cool. And synthetic biology, basically anything related to creating things in a more organic, immediate way would be awesome. Um, have you ever- Extremely shallow, but I just create the work that I love and I mostly create it for myself. And I seem to have some sort of obsession with this particular type of form, particular type of system that has a certain type of aesthetic that emerges from it. Um, and so that's what comes out in all of our work. But part of the way I know it's good is when I know that I think it's really interesting and also really beautiful, um, other direction. We study these enzymes that change adenosine to inosine. And because of this change, you end up producing a different protein in different situations, which causes a lot of weird things to happen. I worked in another lab that studies the phylogeny of viruses. 
um, that infect cyanobacteria. So cyanobacteria live in the ocean and they photosynthesize and they produce like, they're at the lowest level of things that produce uh, all of the bioproductivity of the ocean. And we study these viruses and we're trying to like study the phylogeny of them. That's probably like disease. So when we're working with leaf phaination, for instance, um, we read a lot of papers on people's theories of how leaf veins form, but it's something that they don't fully understand. It's very complicated. So we read a lot of papers about auxin flux canalization and also physical uh, ideas that people have about how cracks might be forming to relieve stress or how veins might be forming like cracks do to relieve stress with sort of the inverse. And then we sort of went from that to also reading uh, computational modeling papers that people have made to model the different types of ideas that people have for how it could occur. And then we took those models and used those to create our algorithm. Um, so it does come directly from what people think, but it's not as direct as I read a paper that says that protein A interlocks with protein B in a certain way. Um, it's happening more at a higher level than that, although everything has different levels. Proteins are made of X. Well, I mean, I think living systems are computational processes in a sense, so they seem exactly the same. <laughs> they have physical rules and they have interactions and we can code those sorts of things. I think the thing that happens with biological systems is that they are extremely ridiculously complicated in a way that we can't model at all right now or understand. There's just so many different things going on being translated and regulated in so many ways with infinite feedback loops and mechanisms. So. Yeah, but I think ultimately if you could model it, then you would essentially create life in the computer. I mean, it would be the same thing. It's just a series of things interacting in a certain way that produces complex behavior. In the simplest example, <laughs> our design process isn't really like one process that goes a certain way, but we work a number of different ways. One way could start uh, with a scientific paper that we read. Uh, and looking at uh, a model proposed there, encoding that into software, um, and then seeing this algorithm that we're creating, what do we want to do with it? How could we turn it into something that could be a real object or be an application or in some way? Um, once we have some sort of idea, like what direction are we going? Is it going to be something that's 3D printed? Is it going to be I'm talking about very concrete things like, is it a ring? Is it a lamp? Is it a table? Is it something 3D printed? Is it something that could be carved in wood? Is it something that's solid or porous or open? Um, once we start to get an idea about that, we then have to go back and start you know, changing the system such that it works towards something that seems like it could make sense. Um, particularly, we just spend a lot of time exploring parameter spaces, looking for what seems interesting to us, getting things just to work because they never do for like the longest time. Um, for work, I am interested in large scale 3D printers that can be used to construct buildings and environments. I'm interested in 3D printers that can embed electronics uh, or other components as you're printing. I'm interested in 3D printers that have multiple materials. Basically, I'm interested in things that we can use to materialize our ideas better at different scales and materials that allow them to be used for different functions and purposes, which they can't currently be used. Um, also growing buildings, that would be cool. And synthetic biology, basically anything related to creating things in a more organic, immediate way would be awesome. Um, have you ever of our work, but part of the way I know it's good is when I know that I think it's really interesting and also really beautiful. Um, say, I mean, I, I can make up things like, oh, it has the differential scale and movement and flow and, you know, reminds me of being in nature or something. But that, I mean, it's just like a feeling that I get from the work. I don't know if it's, I mean, there's intellectual things that are interesting about it, but that's not what gives me the sense of it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's just like, when I'm in nature and I'm looking at a piece of coral, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Why? I don't know. But it's probably an 